Everything is inspired by the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is the founder and chair of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Om Aganati Maranda Shyam Ganagana Sarakya Chaksuri Meditam Tajmai Sri Gurveya Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapi Tamiyana Bhutare Sayam Rupakaramayam Dharati Swapanadikam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Go Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari Hari I'd like to talk to you today about being a prisoner of hope. We all have situations that don't look like they're going to work out. We don't see how we can get well. We don't see how we can get through this pandemic, how we can accomplish a dream, how our family will be restored. All the indications say it's not going to happen. Hope is an antidote to that negative kind of thinking. Overflowing hope, being a prisoner of hope, connects you to the supernatural power of Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Song of God, the narrator describes Krishna Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna Yata Parta Dhanodara. Yogeshwara means the master of all mystic powers. It means not natural powers, but supernatural powers. Now, it's one thing to have hope, but you are truly empowered, truly connected with the supreme mystic when you overflow with hope, when you're a prisoner of hope. When you overflow with hope, you're not moved by what the circumstances look like. You're not discouraged because it hasn't happened yet. You're not worried because you don't see a way. Why? You know Krishna, which is our name for God, is on the throne. You know that God is ordering your steps. You know that God's plans for you are good and not for evil. The odds may be against you, but you don't stop believing. You don't see a way but you keep on thanking that Krishna has a way. People tell you it's not gonna happen. Well, you just let that go in one ear and out the other. I heard a beautiful story about a king who decided to set aside a special day to honor his greatest subject. When the big day arrived, there was a large gathering in the palace courtyard. Four finalists were brought forward from these four, the king would select a winner. The first person was a wealthy philanthropist. The king was told that this man was highly deserving of honor because of his humanitarian efforts. He had given much of his wealth to the poor. The second person was a celebrated physician. The king was told that this doctor was highly deserving of the honor because he had rendered faithful and dedicated service to the sick for his whole career. The third person was a distinguished judge. The king was told that the judge was worthy because he was noted for his wisdom, his fairness, and his brilliant decisions. The fourth person presented was an elderly woman. Everyone was surprised to see her there. Her manner was quite humble. She dressed very unpretentiously. She hardly looked the part of someone who would be honored as the greatest subject in the kingdom. What chance could she possibly have when compared to the other three who had accomplished so much? Even so, there was something about the look of love in her face, the understanding in her eyes, the quiet confidence. The king was obviously intrigued, somewhat puzzled by her presence. He asked who she was. The answer came. You see, the philanthropist, the doctor, and the judge well, she was their teacher. What makes a good teacher is an abiding, overflowing of hope for the potential of their students. Teachers start a work in their students. Parents start a work in their children. Inevitably, they have to let them go, but with an overflowing hope that they will achieve all that they were created to achieve. The best teachers know that what Krishna God started, he's going to finish. Prabhupada, our spiritual master, brought the practice of cleansing the heart with the chanting of God's holy names called Kirtan to the Western world. He arrived in New York City in 1965. He had no resources, no money, not even a place to stay. There were no Brahmins from India to help him. Train the local boys and girls 
there in the Lower East Side of New York in the moods and melodies of Kirtan? If there had been, they would have most likely been appalled at the drug-induced hippies chanting and dancing in Prabhupada's kirtans. The kirtan of these hippies was very different from the traditional chanting of Indian Brahmins. Prabhupada didn't mind. His standard was devotion. In his little storefront Radha Krishna temple, whatever he accepted, Krishna accepted. This was his offering to Krishna through his spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. In spite of no money, no place to stay, no very high class disciples, no help from India, Prabhupada was overflowing with hope for his mission. In one of our scriptures called the Bhakti Sandarpa, text 298, it says, Yata Yati Bidhe Dinanina Dvijatbam Jayateninam. Just as through alchemy, by chemical manipulation, bell metal is turned into gold when it's touched with mercury. Similarly, when a person is properly trained and initiated by a bona fide spiritual master, he or she can acquire all the good qualities of the saintly Brahmins. So even if Prabhupada's young devotees and followers didn't know how to play harmonium or a keyboard or the madanga, even if they didn't know that the kirtan is a call and response process, they would all chant it in unison. Even though they didn't know how to offer respects to the guru, still, just because they were chanting and dancing, Prabhupada would nod to them encouragingly. Yes, you're doing good. Go on, go on. And by his approving, encouraging nods, he was infecting them with his own overflowing of hope. Well, Charu, I hope I get well. I've been sick for so long. I hope my business can make it through this pandemic. I hope I meet the right person. All my friends are married. That's all good, that kind of hope. That's better than being negative. But when you overflow with hope, when you're a prisoner of hope, you take it one step further. Instead of, I hope I get well, I know I'll get well. I know Krishna is restoring health back unto me. Instead of, I hope I'll meet the right person, I know a divine connection is coming. Somebody better than I've ever imagined. Well, true, you've been saying that for five years. You really think it's going to happen? No, I don't think so. I know so. You go through a disappointment. You could be upset, bitter. But when you overflow with hope, you know that even that which is meant for your harm, Krishna is turning it to your advantage. Weeping may endure in the night, but joy is coming in the morning. In a song called Parama Karuna, the purport, Prabhupada writes these words. One should have overflowing hope in the words of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya says that go on chanting. Simply by chanting, you will get all perfection of life. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Elsewhere it said, Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasha Vigraha Purna Shuddha Nitya Mukta Bina Bandhami Namino. The holy name of Krishna, which is a name for God that means all attractive, is a transcendental touchstone for the name of the Absolute and the Absolute are non-different. In the name, you have all knowledge, all bliss, all love, all creativity, all insight, all power. Krishna's name is complete with all of the omnipotent potencies of God. And it is the form of what we call transcendental mellows or pleasure. It is always liberated, free from material contamination. The name of Krishna, Binad Ban Nami Nami No, are non-different. When you associate with God through sound vibration, you assume all godly, righteous qualities. One devotee said, I find that chanting gives me new encouragement, a new prospect, and a boundless overflowing of hope. Whatever we want, whatever is the innermost demand of our heart, it is supplied by the name. 
If we take the name, all our internal hankerings will be fulfilled. It is eternal. It is the purest of the pure. It is full of ecstasy. Prabhupada continues, this is a fact. Unless we actually take to the chanting, taste the chanting, we cannot realize the pleasure and the benefits of the chanting. Those who are chanting are getting all desired perfection of life very quickly, Prabhupada says. So we should chant this mantra with overflowing hope and conviction. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. What are you overflowing with today? Ask yourself. Are you overflowing with hope? Or are you overflowing with worry? What if it doesn't work out? Are you overflowing with doubt? I don't see how this problem can work itself out. Are you overflowing with discouragement? It's been so long. This challenge is so big. Can I tell you that you're overflowing with the wrong thing? If you'll start overflowing with hope, believing despite what it looks like, thanking Krishna even when we could be complaining, expecting things to change in your favor, then you're going to see Krishna or God show up and show out in your life. In the biography of Prabhupada, it says here, that in Prabhupada's early kirtans, wild elements were there, of course, people whose minds and intentions were far away in some chemically induced fantasy. Remember, this is 1965 in the East Village of New York and later on in the Haight-Ashbury. Yet, the mood was dominated by Srila Prabhupada's followers who danced with arms upraised and watched their leader carefully. Although in many ways they were still like hippies, they were Swamiji's disciples and they wanted to please him and follow his instructions. They wanted what he had. They wanted to attain Krishna consciousness. For all the weirdness and aberrations, for all the varied punctuation of horns and hand symbols, the kirtan nevertheless, though untraditional and in some ways bizarre, always sounded very, very sweet. There's a plaque on the tree, the elm tree, in Tompkins Square Park, where Prabhupada first sat down and chanted with his disciples. I'll read you the words of this plaque installed by the mayor of New York at the time. One of Tompkins Square Park's most prominent features is its collection of venerable elm, the Latin is Ulmus Americana, trees. One elm in particular, located next to the semicircle arrangement of benches in the park center, is important to adherents of the Hare Krishna religion. After coming to the United States in September 1965, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, the Indian spiritual leader, founded the International Society for Krishna Consciousness in New York. He worked from a storefront on nearby 2nd Avenue that he used as the society's American headquarters. Prabhupada and his disciples gathered in Tompkins Square Park in the fall of 1966 to introduce the East Village to the group's distinctive 16-word mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. And I'll just share one more short paragraph with you. On October 9th, 1966, Prabhupada and his followers sat beneath this tree and held the first outdoor chanting session outside of India. Participants chanted for two hours as they danced and played cymbals, tambourines, and other percussive instruments. The event is recognized as the founder of the Hare Krishna religion in the United States. Prabhupada's diverse group that day included beat poet Allen Ginsberg, Krishna adherents continue to return to the tree to acknowledge its significance. Srila Prabhupada knew that some aspects of the kirtan were wrong or below standard, but he accepted the offering, and not awkwardly, not as if it was embarrassing him and his culture, but lovingly. He just wanted these American boys and girls to chant, that they dressed irregularly, that they danced spastically or had the wrong philosophy didn't concern him. The boys and girls were chanting Hare Krishna. So according to scriptural authority and Prabhupada's <coughs> own experience, they were corrigible up to the standard of perfection. 
They were hippies, but they knew that if they stuck fast and had overflowing hope in the process of chanting, they would achieve the highest perfection of life. The Bhagavad Gita, the Song of God, talks about our being fully persuaded that Krishna will do what he promised. Now, it's one thing to be persuaded, but when you're fully persuaded, you're not going to change your mind. You're not going to let people talk you out of it. You're not going to let circumstances cause you to quit chanting. Problems that look temporary from the perspective of a chanter, of a devotee, they're only temporary. One expert said, you will never get well, but who chants knows that God has the final say. You don't see how you can accomplish your dream. The devotee, the chanter knows that there are already good breaks lined up for you. Crooked places are being made straight in advance. The right people, the right favor. Krishna wouldn't have given you that promise in your heart without having a way to make it happen. Before you see the promise, there may be a lag time, a waiting period where you don't see anything happening. There's no sign that the people that you're praying about are going to change and get back on course. The circumstances have dragged on too long. Every thought will tell you you're wasting your time. Just accept it, your voice tells you. They're not going to get well. They're not going to get back on course. They're not going to break that addiction. Your business is never going to take off. Sometimes Krishna will put things into your spirit that just don't make sense. Dreams that seem too big, problems that look impossible. How can I ever get my child back on track? There's no sign of it. I don't have the training. How can I start that business? I don't have the experience. How can I build that temple? I don't have the connections. It's Prahlad Maharaj versus Hiranyakashipu, David versus Goliath. All this is a test. Krishna has seen what you're made of. Are you going to allow yourself to get talked out of it, discouraged, negative, ah, oh, I knew it wasn't going to happen? Or are you going to overflow with hope? Are you going to dig down deep and say, I'm not moved by what's not changing. I'm not discouraged because it's taking so long. I'm not worried because nothing is improving. Why? Because I know that Krishna is a faithful God. I've seen him do it in the past, and I know that he'll do it in the future. Srila Prabhupada's overflowing hope was to see the whole world engaged in chanting Hare Krishna. Somehow or other, he used to say, People should be engaged in Krishna consciousness. This was also the instruction of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's chief follower, Rupa Goswami, who wrote 500 years ago, Tajmad Kanapi Upayena Mana Krishna Devesya. Again, somehow or other, fix the mind on Krishna, the rules and regulations can come later. Inherent in Prabhupada's attitude was a strong conviction and overflowing hope about the purifying force of the holy name. If engaged in chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, even the most fallen person could gradually become a saintly devotee. And here's the key. Krishna doesn't ask you to figure it out he doesn't ask you to do it yourself. He doesn't ask you to come up with a plan, research it, see if it's possible. He just asks you to believe. I'm fully convinced that as for me and my students, for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. I'm absolutely convinced that my disciples, my children will be mighty in the land. I'm absolutely convinced that we will spread the light of Godhead far and wide, that we are above and not below. Convinced that we will impact the world for good, that our gifts will come out to the full, that we will leave our mark, that Krishna is opening doors that no man can shut, that our ministry will shine brighter and brighter and brighter. And Prabhupada knew he was a Calcutta boy. You can't pull the wool over the eyes of a Calcutta boy. He knew that every hate Ashbury hippie, no matter how addicted, no matter how fallen they were at present, was nevertheless eligible 
There's nothing we can do to disqualify ourselves from receiving the mercy of the holy name. And Prabhupada saw it as his duty to his spiritual master to distribute the gift of Krishna consciousness freely, rejecting no one. And yet while living amongst these hippies, he did require a certain standard of behavior. He was adamant about preserving the purity of his Krishna society. In the kirtans, he allowed openness. He allowed free expression. He didn't discourage even the wildest participation. But the transcendental sound of Hare Krishna had to dominate. It had to take precedence. He never allowed the chanting to degenerate into mere beating of drums or chanting of old words. Nor could anyone in the group become so crazy that others wouldn't be able to hear or take part in the chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. These dreams that Krishna put in your heart, these promises that he whispered in your spirit, they may seem unlikely. You don't see how it could happen. No one in your family has ever done it before. You could easily talk yourself out of it. You're right where Prabhupada was in 1965. You're at a critical time where you could either dismiss it, think it's too big, it's been too long, or you can do like Prabhupada and say, Krishna or God, I am overflowing with hope that you are going to turn my child around. I'm overflowing with hope that I'm going to get well. I'm overflowing with hope that with your help, I can make a difference in the world. You may not see at present any sign of it happening. You don't have any reason in the natural to believe it. But that's what it means to overflow with hope. Nothing in your logic, in your reasoning, says it's possible, but down in your spirit, in your heart, you feel this passion, this knowing, this expectancy that Krishna is going to do something out of the ordinary, something that you couldn't make happen. Thoughts will tell you it's impossible. Why are you even believing? You know that problem is not going to work out. When it doesn't look hopeful, you don't see any sign of it happening. When every thought of yours says you're wasting your time, what do you do? You dig down deep. Against all hope, you hope on in hope. Against the odds, you dare to believe. In Prabhupada's efforts to somehow or other get these young people chanting Hare Krishna, he instinctively knew what to allow and what not to allow. He was the master, and his new disciples followed him when he would, for instance, permit an egoistic, sensual dancer to jump around the temple or a drugged madman to argue with him in a question and answer interchanged. However, when a person was too disruptive, Prabhupada would immediately lower the boom. Prabhupada was not afraid to stop him. But that was rare. The main thing was passing on at all costs Prabhupada's overflowing hope in the redemptive power of the holy names. What is it that you're overflowing with hope about today? It's not just enough to hope. You have to have an overflow of hope, a made up mind if you want to see it happen. I will get well. I will beat this depression. I will come out of debt. I will accomplish my dreams. When the medical report says you're not going to get well, what do you do? You hope on in faith. That's one report, but Krishna has another report. When your business seems stuck, you lost a client, funds are down, you could settle there, think, well, it's not meant to be. What do you do? You hope on in faith. Krishna or God is still in control. Not maybe, not I hope so, if somebody helps me, if I get the right breaks. No, if you got the ifs, you're going to talk yourself out of it. Overflowing with hope means giving up is not an option. Not believing is not something you even consider. Your face is set. You're not moved by negative reports, not discouraged by how impossible it looks, not complaining about how long it's taking. You know that what Krishna promised is on the way. 
If you're going to overflow with hope, you can't consider all the circumstances. If you stay focused on how big the problem is, what the expert said, how impossible it looks, you're going to get discouraged. Quit considering the circumstances and start considering your God. He spoke worlds into existence. No person can stop him. No sickness, no pandemic, no bad break, no addiction. What are you considering? How big your problems are or how great your God is? You may feel like there's no reason to have hope. In the natural, it's not possible. But I'm happy to tell you we serve a supernatural God. And when you keep hoping on, hoping against hope, when you're a prisoner of hope, you're paving the way for Krishna or God to do extraordinary things. Some promises don't come to pass overnight. They take time. When you're waiting, it's easy to lose your passion, think it's never going to happen, start believing those lies that the problem is too big. You can't accomplish your dreams. If it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. You have to learn the art of keeping your hopes stirred up. You have to be overflowing with hope not being moved by what's happening, by how long it's taking, by how impossible it looks. You know that what Krishna promised is on the way. That's what Prabhupada showed by example. That's why there are 820 Hare Krishna temples and farms and restaurants all over the world. That's what Prabhupada showed by example. Overflowing hope, that's what he passed on teacher to disciples, that as he overflowed with hope for us, compensated for all of our shortcomings, we would also reach out, stretch our faith, and overflow with hope for others. That we, like him, would continue to overflow with hope even when the challenge seems too big, that we would stay in faith when it's taken a long time, that we wouldn't consider our circumstances, but we would consider our God. One devotee said, surely, O Lord, you will bless the righteous and surround them with a shield. He could have said, Lord, you will bless the righteous. But he added the word surely. He was saying, I'm absolutely convinced. I'm fully persuaded that what you promised is on the way. Can I suggest that you have some surely's in your life? Surely I'll get well. Surely I'll pay off my house. Surely I'll meet the right person. Surely this problem is turning around. Surely new doors are open. Surely I'll come through this pandemic twice as well off as I was before. Not maybe, not there's a good chance. If the medicine works, if I get the promotion, if these people like me, no. You need to add the surely. You have to overflow with hope. Another devotee said, surely goodness and righteousness will follow me all the days of my life. He was saying, I'm confident that good things are coming. I'm confident that the situation is turning around. It's very powerful when you add surely to what you're believing for. Thoughts will tell you you'll never get well. You saw the medical report. Surely, oh Lord, you will heal me. Surely, Lord, good health is on the way. You'll never get out of debt. Surely I will lend and not borrow. You'll always struggle with that bad habit. Surely I will break this addiction. Surely freedom is coming. Surely I will accomplish my dreams. Surely I will set a new standard for my family. Well, how can you say that true? It doesn't look like any of the circumstances, any of the strongholds have changed. Yes, I'm not moved by my circumstances. I'm moved by what Krishna promised. He said, surely he will bless me. Surely he will surround me with his favor. When you have this surely mentality, you're going to see some surely's come to pass. Surely your family is going to be restored. Surely you're going to start that mission. Surely you're going to meet the right person. Surely your business is going to excel. Don't let the circumstances fool you. Surely you're going to be blessed and see favor that you've never seen before. Not in my own strength. Not in my own ability, but Lord, I know that you will bless me. You will surround me with your favor. You will help me to live healthy and whole. 
Surely I will plant the seeds of a successful mission. Surely, Lord, your name will be chanted in every town and village of the world. Surely my life and the life of my family will be blessed by your favor. Well, Teru, what about the pandemic? What about business being slow? Well, what about our God? He's still on the throne, you know. He's not limited by the environment. He's not limited by the economy. He's not limited by what you have or you don't have, by who's against you. He has all power. He controls the universe. Aham sarvasya prabhavo mata sarvam pravartate. I am a source of everything. From me, all things come. Now, the good news is that all-powerful Lord is on the side of his devotees. His breath is behind the sails of those who put him first place and chant his holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We chant being confident of Krishna's special concern for his devotees. That means have no doubt. Lord has his devotees in the palm of his hand. What Krishna started with them, he will finish. What he promised will come to pass. Have this surely mentality, made up mind, not moved by the circumstances, by how long it's taking, by what's not changing. Why? Because you know that Krishna is a surely God. Surely he will bless me. Surely he will do what he said. It's easy to doubt in this day and age in this day and age, it's easy to get talked out of your dreams. Would you agree with me? Doubters are a dime a dozen. Negative people, 99.9% .9 of the population. Discouraged people, they're the standard. They're everywhere. But Krishna is looking for people who are overflowing with hope, who have a made-up mind, people that are absolutely convinced. You may have challenges coming against you right now, you could overflow with worry, with discouragement, with self-pity. But look at you. You're starting to overflow with hope. You're thinking of thanking Krishna when you could be complaining. You're going to be good to people when they're not being good to you. You're believing when you don't see anything changing. You're talking victory, declaring Krishna's promises. You have a song of praise. You rise early in the morning and you honor the Lord by chanting his holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You need to get ready. Instead of overflowing with trouble, overflowing with sickness, overflowing with bad breaks, you are about to overflow with favor, overflow with healing, with abundance, with freedom. Hare Krishna. And because the devotees, those who keep God first place, are characterized by overflowing with hope, Surely Krishna is going to bless them, their children, their students. Surely Krishna is going to turn their problems around. Surely they're about to see something they've never seen, something out of the ordinary, something unusual that thrusts them to a whole new level. Now, our encouragement is get up every morning with a surely mentality. Surely, Lord, you'll bless me. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. That's not being arrogant. That's overflowing with hope. That's what Prabhupada did. Surely, O oh Lord, what you promised. The names of the Lord will resonate in every town and village of the world. Surely, Lord, you will bless your devotees. Surely, you will surround them with favor. Are you looking at how big your obstacles are? Or are you looking at how big your God is? Your situation may seem impossible, like it would never work out. But one touch of Krishna's favor... One encounter, one good break, one phone call, one healing, one meeting the right person, and everything can turn around 180 degrees. In life, let me tell you, you're going to overflow with something. Worry, doubt, stress. Why don't you decide to overflow instead with hope? Why don't you believe that surely goodness, righteousness, mercy are following you? Why don't you be fully persuaded what Krishna has promised is on the way? Have a new perspective. Surely, O oh Lord, you will do what promised. 
I am confident that what you started, you'll finish. I believe that if you will overflow with hope, like with Prabhupada, promises that look impossible are going to come to pass. Blessings are going to chase you down. Healing is coming. Breakthroughs, freedom, abundance, the fullness of your destiny in this life and next life, you go back to home, back to God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama. Rama, Rama. Hari Hari.